Hello, welcome to another episode of Jim's Allotment Garden. It's a little bit warmer today um, than it was yesterday. We're looking at 10 degrees in the greenhouse and uh, uh, about 6 degrees outside. There's not that much wind so it's um, it's not that bad. But this, last night it was blowing a hooli through the allotment. But the, the, uh, the weather vane, I'm very happy to say, has stayed upright and is still spinning around. So uh, it's all good, so, you know, you know, so we're all right. But anyway, in today's episode, I'm going to be talking about um, one of the biggest pests that I've ever had in the, uh, the garden. And I'm going to be talking to you about various ways how we can control this pest and, um, and effectively how you can almost eradicate it out of your garden. So, welcome to another episode of Jim's Along the Garden. Okay, so if your chickens are anything like mine, during the winter months what they will do is um, not only lay in the uh, the nests, but uh, they'll also overnight in the nests as well. So mine normally in the summer they go on the uh, the roosting bar in the run. Um, but at this time of year, because it's probably a little bit warmer and safer for them, they'll actually um, sleep in the nest. But unfortunately what this means is they can sort of make a bit of a mess in the nest overnight. And obviously if you're not coming back up to them to collect the eggs till sort of midday, what you can get is um, um, a bit of muck on the eggs. Now, don't, um, don't be um, too worried about this. It's not really a problem as such. What I suggest you do, um, is, which, which is what I do, is um, just put the, put the eggs into um, a bowl with some cold water um, and leave them in there for sort of um, five minutes or so. And then all you need to do is just get a little bit of, um, like a sponge or a cloth or something like that, and then just wipe them all over, and you'll and you'll find it soon comes off. I just wanted to add a further point with eggs. Um, if you've got a cockerel, um, the eggs from a chicken will be um, will be fertile. So in other words, they are actually a living organism, if if you like, inside the egg. Um, and basically, chicken eggs, uh, well any eggs really. What what a chicken will do in, in in nature is what it'll do is it'll it'll lay probably about a dozen eggs before it starts to sit on them and, and, and incubate them. So if you um, if you have a cockerel and you've got a, a fertile egg, um, the egg will um, basically stay dormant um, in its um, in, inside its egg until the temperature is raised to something like um, sort of 28, 29, 30 degrees. So if you keep an egg, a fertile egg, um, at room temperature, it will stay fresh because it's still alive. Now, some breeds of chicken will only lay an egg every other day. Uh, most chickens lay an egg every day, but, but some breeds most certainly lay every other day. So if you've, um, if you've got a fertile egg, Whatever you do, don't keep it in the fridge, keep it at room temperature in a bowl or in an egg box or whatever. And then that egg will stay fresh for up to a month. Um, you, you know, you don't have to keep them in a fridge or anything like that. Because when it's in the fridge, what you'll actually do is, is the reverse effect. You'll kill the egg and then as soon as the egg is, is, is effectively dead, then it'll start to decay. Then obviously, you know, it'll, it'll go bad. Now, if there's one thing in the garden. I'm going to talk about a pest and this pest has absolutely destroyed whole cops for me. Um, about four or five years ago um, I had um, two different types of potato in um, the allotment and um, these things went straight the way through and killed the bloody lot. Well didn't kill them but destroyed every single potato pretty much that was in the ground. And um, I've also had um, quite a few um, strawberry crops that have been quite damaged by these and of course I'm talking about slugs. Now out of all the pests that we get in the garden obviously there's you know there's there's, there's a few of them. Um, slugs are by far the one that um, 
I've I've very um, quickly grown to hate to be honest with you, and I and I do all sorts of things to, um, you know, to sort of get around the problem of having slugs in the garden. The one thing that I will say is, irrespective of what you do, you will never stop slugs. Um, you can control them, you can reduce them, but um, you know you can kill every single slug that's on your um, garden or plot. The following year, they'll find their way in from next door or whatever. So there's nothing you can ever do to completely eradicate them, but what you can do is control them and um, both um, use various methods to you know, sort of kill them off or um, grow plants which are sort of less susceptible to damage from them. So I'm just going to go through a few pointers with you to talk about slugs and, um, and you know, sort of explain how I control them in my garden and also um, on the allotment so, um, you know, so you can pick up some of the tips. Now, there are three main slugs that, that, um, that affect plants and that in the UK. There are you know, sort of hundreds of different varieties possibly. I'm not quite sure how many there are, but uh, there are basically three main sorts. And uh, the one, the one um, that you know is 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 most obvious are the ones that sort of stay on the top of the ground. And uh, these are the reasonably large ones that you can see. Um, and they tend to eat anything like lettuce and um, you know, sort of soft um, young plants and stuff like that. And they'll sort of get in there and strip the leaves off and eat them away and all the rest of it. And you can always tell when they've about because you've got this slimy track where you, you know wherever they've been. Um, they're actually not that bad. You can control them reasonably easily with um, you know with various methods. You can put um, obviously slug pallets down. You can put eggshell down. You can put as I've said in the previous section in the in the in the, uh, the question section. You know as um, as we said, you know, you can put pine pine spines down and all uh, pine needles and 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 um, spruce needles and stuff like that. Um, you, you know, which was which was advised by Katie Lee. Um, so those are reasonably controllable. You can also put um, um, beer down to make a trap. So if you sink a um, a beer uh, glass, like a a pint glass, or at the bottom of a bottle, or even um, half an orange peel into the ground and they'll fill that with beer, the smell of the beer, the yeast attracts them to it and they'll get in there and drown. Um, it's a bit of a messy situation because what you need to do is keep going around and you need to empty them out and put them in a jam jar and it's, it's not particularly nice. Well, I typically don't do that but I have done it in the past. Um, and there's other uh, means that you can um, use. You can, you can stop these um, slugs by putting copper copper strip around things and this and this acts very much in the same way as a um, as a battery um, if you've ever made a battery out of an orange or a lemon you know you put a piece of copper in there and you put a piece of um, zinc or or tin in there and you can get an electrical current through it um, it's, it works exactly the same way if you imagine the slime which is on a um, uh, the um, you know the bottom of a slug when that goes onto the copper it will react with the copper um, there's, there's, there's two main things. There's actually a chemical reaction which occurs um, between the uh, between the slime and the copper, but also uh, you get this electrical charge formed as well, which which will obviously deter them. And if you put a copper, if you've got a pot or a, uh, anything like that, and you put a um, copper strip around, um, the slugs won't won't go over it. So you need about an inch of um, copper, and you can get tape, copper tape, um, garden centre sell it, but it's quite expensive. But if you go to um, Plumbing centres do it, hardware stores like B&Q, Wix, places like that will do it. Um, you can also get it online as well, just go on, um, just go on eBay and put copper, copper um, tape. Um, you'll find there's various places, it's not that expensive if you buy it like that. Um, so if you've got any pots or anything like that, if you put a, um, a solid line around it, or if you've got any raised beds, you can put it around the top of the raised beds, you'll stop slugs getting in. Those are the, the big slugs that you see. Um, I'm going to come on to other ways of controlling them in a minute because it's it's common between um, them all. But uh, the one slug that really, really um, causes all sorts of problems in the uh, the garden are the little ones which stay underground, and because they're underground, it's difficult to control them. Um, and they will go through um, your crops. You know, you, you know, they'll eat the tubers of the uh, potatoes, carrots, anything like that. They'll, they'll, you know, they'll sort of go through. Particularly potatoes, they love potatoes, and they will absolutely destroy a whole crop. And I've had this, uh, uh, you, you know, once, and I've, I've, I've changed the way I do things, and I've never had the problem since. So, um, just to, ju just to sort of more orderly, I've, I've kind of talked around the subject a little bit now. But what I'll do is I'll actually sort of list the things that you can do. So the first one is, um, is. Um, 
something that I have tried in the past, I haven't done it for a few years, but you can do this, and these are putting in a um, um, something called nematodes, which are very small um, sort of worms, little eel worms. And what they'll actually do is they'll burrow into the, um, the slug's body. Whilst they do that, they pass on a bacteria to the slug and it'll kill the slug. The nematodes aren't harmful to anything else, and um, so they won't, you know, inadvertently hurt anything else. Um, and um, basically, you water them on. So you get, you can buy them over the internet, which is the best way to do. God sent is getting quite expensive, but you can buy them over the internet. They come in a little pot. You, you put them in some water, and then you water them onto the ground, and then they go into the ground, find the slugs, eat into the slugs, and then obviously the bacterial infection kills the slug. So you can kill the slugs in the ground. That's that's one way of dealing with them. The, I've talked about uh, beer traps, that's where you put a bottle in the ground and the slugs will go in there. It's a bit of a missy game because you have to pull them out and I don't really like doing that too much. Of it. But um, that's, that, that's one way of doing it. And this method as well is you've got to go around pretty much every morning and, and, and sort of collect them up. There is a slight sort of variation on this theme. If you put um, plastic down, or anything really, old tiles um, or um, um, plastic plastic or, or, or anything like that. If you put that down the slugs will go underneath it because that's the a nice moist atmosphere for them to you know to sort of go in. And if you go around either late at night or early in the morning, pull that up, you'll find that the slugs in there and basically you put your thumb through them or you put your foot on them or whatever and kill them that way. Put the plastic back down, following date some more will come in there. So that's another way of trapping them. Um, obviously that's um, environmentally friendly as well and organic. Um, the next one is the copper strip, which I've told you. We, we, you know, we can put that around pots. That doesn't kill them, but it deters them from going into any anything that you've got, which is which is tender to, um, you know, sort of plants. So obviously, the uh, the little ones that are in the ground, that's not going to help you with them. Um, and if you've got pots where you've got um, bulbs in there, which they leak into, um, you know, you need to use one of the other methods that I'm talking about now. Sulfur's a good one, um, and you get sulfur from not not neat sulfur. If if you can get hold of um, there aren't many people now who have coal fires, but if you've got um, a neighbour or, or indeed yourself has got a coal fire, save the ash. And where, where you put your potatoes, put the coal ash into the ground. Now the sulphur in that coal ash will deter the slugs because the sulphur, when it reacts with the, with the slime on the slug, it, it um, creates um, um, sulfuric acid, H2SO4, which obviously burns the slug. And then the slug will turn around and scurry off. It doesn't kill it, but it'll stop it going near the potatoes. But Remember, if you've got your seed potato in the middle, all of your new potatoes are going to come off that. So you need to put the sulphur in all the area around, not not not, not just round the um, seed potato. You need to put it all the way around. Um, and this is a method which is really good. Um, it's a Victorian trick by putting um, uh, coal dust in the ground. But unfortunately, now coal dust isn't that easily um, um, sort of sort of readily available because there's not many people with coal fires. But if you if you are lucky enough to have one yourself, or you know people who have got coal fires. Um, the dust from the coal fire, put that in the ground, you just need to sprinkle it in, fork it in around where the potato is going to grow and then that will deter the slugs from going in. The next one is, is mother nature at its best. Um, birds, frogs, hedgehogs, beetles, all of these things will eat slugs and you must, um, you know, you know, you know, all of these creatures out there will help you to control the numbers of slugs you've got. So if you can encourage frogs by having a pond in your allotment or in your garden, the frogs will eat the slugs. So you, you know, you're using Mother Nature to your advantage there. Also, um, birds. If you've got birds in your garden, they will also scurry around in the in the um, in the ground. Chickens are great for this. There's no slugs in my garden because of the chickens. They go around and they have a good scratch around. If you see a slug, it's it, it's you know that you know they're straight in there and add that. Um, Unfortunately, they, they kill all the bloody plants in the, in, in, at the same time, but <laughs> there's no slugs either. Um, hedgehogs, beautiful little animals. Um, I put a couple of videos out last year showing the hedgehogs that I've got in the allotment. Um, you can encourage hedgehogs into your garden in a, in a, you know, in a number of ways. You can put um, some cat food down, because um, they love cat food. Don't put bread and milk down, it's not good for them. Uh, but you can put just some water in a, in, in a, in a jar Always put it there because they'll keep coming back to the same place. And hedgehogs can do two or three miles in a night, you know, you know, sort of walking around. So um, always put it there. If you encourage the hedgehogs in, then they'll then they'll go. If you have got a uh, a rat problem or anything like that, be careful of putting cat food down, obviously, because you're encouraging the rats as well. 
Um, but hedgehogs, if you can encourage hedgehogs into your garden. Um, and I was also going to put a hedgehog box in the allotment this year, but I just haven't got around to doing it. Um, but um, if you can put a little nest box in your, in your allotment anyway, if you've got a quiet corner, um, that's a good way of encouraging hedgehogs into your garden as well. Um, and obviously beetles, they're everywhere anyway, so uh, you know, as, as long as you've got um, some um, sort of rotting wood matter somewhere in your allotment, um, you know the beetles will get in there, and uh, you know plenty of beetles. The beetles will eat the slugs, so uh, you know you know sort of in, you know encouraging anything like that. The next way of controlling slugs, and it's not um, it's not quite obvious to you when you first think about it, but slugs like moist, wet um, environments. If you can keep your allotment dry, um, then um, you know the the slugs won't. Um, sort of stay there. They'll sort of go off and try and find some other wet. This is this is kind of the same thing as putting plastic down or a tile. So, if you're not going to um, try to keep your um, compost away from any plants that um, are susceptible to slugs, um, and also um, if you're not going to um, if you don't need to mulch a plant, don't mulch it. Um, if you've got any dead leaves, fetch them up. Um, you know, sort of rake all your dead leaves up out of the way because these are habitats where the slugs will get in there, breed, lay eggs, and then you've got a whole new raft of generation to come the next year to eat all your plants. So if you can minimise, I said, like the, like the uh, the strawberries, I said, I, I took all of the old leaves out and everything, and basically what I'm doing is stopping the habitat where the slugs will live. So the slugs will go off and live somewhere else, and they're not going to damage my strawberries in the spring, that kind of thing. Um, right, there is. Um, a kind of adverse effect to this. With potatoes, you want to put lots of manure in the ground because obviously you want your potatoes to grow nice and big and, and all the rest of it. And you want the ground to be moist so the potatoes grow. However, one way of deterring slugs is not to put manure in the ground. Manure will attract slugs. So uh, unfortunately there's not a lot you can do there. But if, if you've got a manure patch, again, just like your compost, don't put it near any plants that are susceptible to slugs, like your lettuce or you know your salad. Um, the next one, is to be clever about the varieties of plants that you're growing. Now, the year I told you, um, which is about five, six years ago, I forget now, I had um, five rows of uh, Maris Piper potatoes, main crop, and I also had um, King Edward uh, main crop potatoes. They were lovely big potatoes, but they were all full of slugs, and I had to pretty much throw the bloody lot away. Which is, which is really frustrating because they were really healthy plants and when I dug them all up it was absolutely heartbreaking to find pretty much every potato I took out of the ground was full of um, uh, the slugs um, and the, there wasn't a lot that I could do about it. I read upon the subject a few years back and um, I had a bit of advice from both my father and other people and potato varieties are, some of them are considerably less um, susceptible to slugs. Now I grow kestrel potatoes. Kestrel are one of the varieties of um, uh, potatoes that, that, that aren't susceptible to slugs. And, and ever since I've grown kestrel, which has been for the past sort of five or six years, I haven't had a slug problem. I get the odd one here and there with a slug in it, one slug. But nowhere near um, the problem that I had with the um, King Edward and the Maris Piper, because they were just absolutely riddled with slugs. Um, and obviously I took all the potatoes out and took them all down the tip to get rid of the slugs as well um, but the um, they were just they were just everywhere the there are, there are quite a few um, potato varieties that the um, the, uh, the keel slug which is the small one um, in, in the in, in the ground all attack uh, Maris Piper and King Edward are most certainly two I can, I've, I've, I've got evidence to prove you know I've, I've been there and done that uh, Maris Piper, King Edward um, are most certainly varieties that you don't want to um, um, grow. There are, out of the potatoes, there's probably about sort of uh, about 15 different varieties that we grow in the UK. Well, about half of them are susceptible to slugs, half of them are not. Um, I've already talked about the kestrel, which I grow. They are not. Um, susceptible to slugs they you know I've, I haven't really had a problem with them since uh, Wilger is another one which is good for um, uh, you know for not getting slug damage and also Charlotte uh, um, a good potato variety that uh, so if you don't like kestrel I can't imagine why because they are a really good potato they're, a, they're a, you know they're a fluffy potato so you can do mash 
baked potatoes, chips, uh, mash, roast, you know, they're fantastic for, you know, potatoes for doing that kind of thing. Uh, but if you want a waxy potato for salad and stuff like that, you know, you, you know you're going to want a different variety. But um, Kestrel, Wilger, Charlotte, all of those three, you can put on the ground and they will be pretty well, um, you know, slug resistant. I'm not saying you won't get the odd one, but it's nothing like sort of Manus Piper King Edward. Um, the next way is obviously the slug pallets, which is the traditional way. These aren't going to kill the ones that have your potatoes, these are going to kill the bigger ones that have your lettuce and all the rest of it. Um, slug pallets, there's two different types, mainly. Um, and the ones that you want to go for, which is the non-toxic type, um, is um, fer it's got the, 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 the active ingredient in there is ferric sulphate. So when you get your slug pallets, look on the label and uh, you want the ones for ferric, uh, ferric sulphate. Um, ferric sulphate is absolutely um, no problem for any um, um, vertebrate, you know, any any mammal or, or bird or anything like that. So if your birds come in and um, eat your slugs after they've been on the slug pallets or whatever, or your hedgehogs or or, or anything like that, um, you know, they won't get hurt. And obviously, it's important that you look after the nature. So um, always think about when you're buying your slug pallets. Always think about that. There's two types. One's good. One's bad. The ones with ferric sulfate typically are about the same price as um, the others. Um, I can't remember the active ingredient in the other, but that's that's harmful to mammals and birds and stuff. Um, but um, unfortunately, most of the supermarkets stock the other version that is harmful. But um, just you know, just um, you, you know, just look at the ingredients. Ferric sulfate is what you're looking for. Obviously, iron sulfate. Um, the the next, perhaps not so obvious way of um, controlling slugs is slugs basically lay eggs um, in um, autumn and spring. So if you've got boards on your allotment like I've got where you walk across to save you getting feet muddy when you're pulling your veggies out, or if you put the tiles down or the plastic down or, or whatever else, at this time of year, in the autumn and in the spring, if you go around and pull them up, what you'll find, um, and there's an example of this, if you look back in the um, November episodes where I was putting the fence around the rhubarb, I actually found some eggs when I pulled up all the uh, the bricks to, to put the fence in. So you'll actually see them in that video. If you go back, I think it's third episode in November, something like that. So the one where it's talking about the, the, the rhubarb fence. Uh, when I'm actually putting it in the ground, so it's the last one of that series. Um, the eggs are white, little balls about three millimetres across, and they'll always be in a cluster. So you'll always have, I don't know, maybe 30 or 40 together in a, in a cluster. If you can find them, you've hit gold. Um, so this time of year, you know, it's sort of as we're coming into spring, and the autumn, the back end of the year, if you put your plastic down and your tiles and everything like that, the slugs are going to go in there and lay their eggs. Basically, if you keep pulling up your bits of plastic in your tiles and stuff like that, and you find these eggs, just put your thumb through the lot of them. If you you know if you if you're a bit squirmish and you don't want to do that, just get a little teaspoon, spoon them up into a jam jar and throw them in the bin or, or whatever. Put them in a bag and throw them in the bin. Just just get rid of them because that fifty, that cluster of fifty eggs is going to make fifty little slugs, which are going to go out there and eat all your vegetables. So that's another really good way of controlling slugs. Um, and obviously, it only really works in the spring and the autumn. But um, have a look around. If you can see any of these eggs, get hold of them and either crush them, put them in a bag, then crush them, or put them in a jam jar, then crush them, um, or just crush them and put them straight in the bin or whatever, but basically just get rid of them. Um, but that's that's the best way that I can explain how to control slugs in your garden. Uh, there are, these are all organic ways that I've um, explained to you. There are other ways of um, um, controlling slugs, uh, which are, which are non-organic. Um, like for uh, for example, if you've got potatoes, you're putting potatoes in. Don't put muck in. Put a uh, non-organic fertilizer in. Oh, it's not what I do. I always, you know, I'll, I'll always take the organic route. Uh, but that but that's one way of doing it. There are other chemicals that you can put into the ground. There's one called slug it, um, which I've never. I actually bought some once, which was the year that the the potatoes got wiped out, and I thought I'm going to put some slug it on the ground. Um, if you put that on the ground, it's recommended you don't grow any edible um, um, crops in that ground for nine months. And when I read that, I thought, no, I'm not putting that on my allotment. Um, but that's a liquid, um, 
a liquid that you basically water onto the ground and that goes into the ground and kills any slugs in there dead. Um, because I grow vegetables and I'm organic, I didn't use that. But if you've got um, if you've got a patch of ground where you've got flowers or, or whatever where you, that you're not going to eat and you're not organic yourself, that is one other method which is really good. I've known other people use that stuff and it does literally wipe them out. But you're putting chemicals into the ground, um, which is something that I, you know, that I always avoid doing. But um, if you've tried other organic ways, sometimes, as I've said in the past, sometimes you've got to draw the line and say, I've tried the organic way, it hasn't worked. What other options have I got? If there aren't any, you're going to have to you know, use a chemical if it's causing you that much bother. So um, that's, that's one. It's called Slug It. It's a liquid small bottle. You'll find it on the internet and also garden centres. Um, and basically you put just a little bit in some water and then water that on the ground and that will go into the ground and the chemicals will then react with the um, with, you know with the slugs and that in the, in, in the, uh, the ground um, but obviously if any hedgehogs or birds or anything pick the slugs up afterwards you may well be damaging them as well so I'm not sure what chemicals are in it um, I did try and find it earlier on so I can explain what chemicals are in it but I've, I've binned it so I haven't, I haven't got it any longer but uh, that's that's one method, and uh, there are other chem such chemicals on the market that you can buy to do it. But um, if you can possibly do it organically, like I've explained, please do that, uh, because um, as I've said in the past, you know we are only custodians of, of you know of this rock that we're standing on, and if we can possibly get away without using chemicals, then for everybody's sake and for generations to come that's got to be the best way of doing things so uh, that was part three of um, Don't Fight With Mother Nature Garden Chemistry I hope that's been useful to you um, you'll probably find that slugs are your biggest problem as well and, and, and I, I've had all sorts of problems in the past with them and these are the methods that I've used to um, you know, so either, either deter them or kill them off um, as I've explained in the last one the other bit that I didn't quite explain is you can put other things on the ground like eggshell and that'll, that'll deter them, but it most certainly doesn't kill them. But uh, please use what I've explained to you, um, to your advantage, and um, I hope that's uh, been of some use to you. Okay, so in the, in the Mother Nature videos, what we've done now is we've covered a few basics on, on, um, on, on sort of fertilisers, minerals that you need in the ground for your, um, your plants and stuff like that. So I've kind of done a broad um, sort of outlook on, on uh, what's, uh, you, you know, what's needed. We've also had a look at um, a couple of things that you can control aphids with, and slugs, which are really the two main pests um, that you get in, in most gardens, most certainly in the UK. Um, now what I'm going to be doing is continuing with the Mother Nature Garden Chemistry type um, um, talks whilst the weather's bad and we can't get on the, on the, uh, the allotment. What I'm going to be doing is, is explaining to you um, in, in sort of more specific um, Ma you know, in a more specific manner, how you can deal with certain issues that you get in the garden. Now, I'm going to be talking right across the spectrum from how you can encourage the right things into your garden, how you can encourage beetles, um, wood lice, um, and all these uh, um, sort of insects, which are, which are good for the garden. And then I'm going to be talking about um, how you can introduce things into the ground to um, to help your plants. So talking about introducing funguses into the ground um, and um, how you can be introducing um, certain um, bacteria or, or things like that into the ground to help your plants. Um, fungus can, can um, infect plants uh, in, in a good way and what it will do is it will actually encourage the, um, the, uh, the plant to grow its roots correctly and be able to get the nutrients and the minerals out of the ground a lot easier so you so your plants will grow considerably stronger and faster and, and, and more vigorously, giving you a better crop. This is all organic. Um, you can also add bacteria into the ground to break down these minerals into the forms that your plants can absorb. So I'm going to be talking about that as well in, in, in the coming episodes. And I'm also going to be looking at other means and, and, and methods of controlling uh, the pests that you get in your garden. Obviously, so far we've focused on um, making um, insecticides or, or pesticides from, you know, from rhubarb and from um, oranges and bananas and stuff like that. And now you can use um, certain things um, like bananas to ripen fruit. There are a whole raft of these that uh, that I want to explain how, how you can use. And armed with this information, you'll be in a very good position to, if you do come across um, any problems in the garden, 
um, that, that you'll be able to um, battle it. Now every year, anybody that's had an allotment for any amount of time uh, will agree with me, every year is different, dependent on the weather, um, dependent on um, you know the sort of how, how damp things are, what plants you're growing, um, the, the seasons, how, the, how much light you've got, all of these things will change from year to year and you will always come up against um, new problems that you've never seen before. You could have an allotment for 30 years and then all of a sudden you'll see something that you've never seen before. And um, I want to explain all of these things so you're armed with the information so that when you do have this problem, if you do have this problem, touch wood that you don't, but if you do, you know how to deal with it in an organic way um, rather than spraying chemicals over everything all the while, which is obviously what we want to avoid. So in the, in the coming months, I'll be explaining um, step by step how you can do this. Um, you, you know, to help everybody with, you know, sort of dealing with any pests in the garden. If you do have any particular um, issues that you've had in recent years, um, please do put a comment below, um, because what I can do is I can make sure that I cover that when I'm um, discussing these things with you. Um, and also, if there's any, um, if there's any questions of what I've what I've already explained, that I've not quite explained um, clearly or whatever, please do put a comment below and, um, and I'll either explain um, you know, to you in a comment re uh, reply or what I will do is, is I'll put a little bit in one of the coming videos to explain that in a little bit more depth or you know, a little bit earlier. And the more you understand about how the garden grows and stuff like that, you start to see all of the jigsaw pieces fitting together and, and obviously there's an equilibrium um, you know, to be found where you're putting certain things into the ground and you're, and you're, you know, you're behaving in a certain way to get the best out of your crops and obviously that's what everybody ultimately wants anyway so um, please do let me know if you've had any particular problems and then I can make sure that I cover that in the coming um, weeks so um, anyway I hope all of the information that I've given you so far has been of um, use to you and um, I hope that the information that I gave you um, in, in, in this episode um, has helped you understand how to control slugs, which, which really for me is one of the worst um, problems that I've had on the allotment up to date. Um, but um, thank you for your support to everybody and um, I hope this um, episode has been of some use to you. As I say, please do comment below, please do subscribe and, um, and I can, you know, if you've got any questions or comments, please do put them down and I will um, and, I'll, and I'll get back to you as, 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 as best I can. So thank you again and I shall see you on the next edition of Jim's Allotment Garden.